On this episode of the iPhotography Podcast, Greg goes over iOS 18 developer beta he's had for one week to tell us about the difference for the photos layout and a little bit of editing changes that's happened with that. We talk about some apps that we had, the good, the bad, and the ugly, and we go over our recent photos. It's Monday, June 17th, and this is the iPhoneography Podcast. Welcome, everyone. A bit of a switch up today. I know you were expecting Greg. Maybe even, you know, sometimes we throw Shane in the beginning. But today, I'm introducing the podcast. So my name's Dave Podner, and with me, as always, is Greg McMillan. How are you doing today, Greg? I'm doing really good, Dave. Uh, it's a heat wave here in uh, Canada, if you can believe that. Yeah. Um, it, it was, what, what, low 90s, 31 degrees Celsius. Uh mm -hmm. And it's not going to let up anytime soon, by the looks of it, at least for a few days. But uh, we'll get through it. Uh, oh, that's, yeah. That's what, that's what we got air conditioning for. <laughs> uh, so, but, uh, but or yeah. Or fans. Or fans. Oh, yeah. Or, or fans. Yeah. 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 <laughs> um, and and the, the basement is always a good place to go to because it's usually cooler down there. Most definitely. So there's always Most that. Most definitely. But uh, yes. you guys had some... Uh, you know, a bit of a, a thunderstorm or a storm go through and you lost a bit of power today for oh, yeah. a while. Yeah. Yeah. Um, it was, it was good in terms of dropping the temperature for a bit while the rain was coming down. Um, it was just one of these weird, yeah, even though we're late spring, it isn't summer yet. We're not summer until the end of this week. Another but, four days. <laughs> yeah. But it was one of these like warm day, unsettled atmosphere pop of storm boom and all of a sudden you lose power we were just finishing cooking dinner oh well. so the dinner was well dinner was done uh there was one thing we were just heating up in the microwave and then all it's like the light came on and it went off and it went on and went off and went on and went off oh, and then yeah. yeah then it just went off for like a good hour or so well that's not so, too bad no, but, but no, you know, no. at least you got your dinner cooked anyway. And uh, true, uh, we had a real bad storm come through a few days ago, and it actually uh, this one lady, her tree in her front yard, literally split in half. So she had to have mm. the whole thing. And luckily, it fell on the lawn, not the house, the house because yeah. it's right in front of the house. And then, uh, so she's she's had it taken right down because I mean, it it was awful looking. And there's, there was a few trees down around town. It was almost like a tornado hit. And I was doing a mm. time lapse of the clouds rolling over when this thing hit. So my phone was pointing out the back door. Just I was inside the house, but just looking through the window and up at a, at a hydro pole. And the trees, you know, were doing their thing in the wind and whatnot. Mm -hmm. And then all of a sudden this went through and it was just like a twister went through. The trees were bent over so bad that it was just unreal. And it was. I, I wish I wasn't doing a time lapse because you really can't mm. get a grip of it was a one second because I shut it off and I went to move to the front of the house because it was really bad out there. And I only got a one second video out of it. But I mean, mm. it, it was bad. It was a it was a bad storm. Oh. And uh, I know. Well, and also, sometimes those straight line winds can be almost as bad as a as a tornado. Oh, yeah. Well, there was a tornado warning that came out. Um uh. on the phones and the reports from i think it was from environment canada or whoever does these things said there was actually no twisters touched down in owen sound but it was nasty it was gnarly i know mm. one guy at work was at a ball game and they were in the dugout and it was it's just a, like a ground level dugout it's not a not down in the ground okay they, yeah they yeah. were all huddled together trying to hang on for dear life when this hit. They didn't even have time to run mm. to the vehicles. And the the scoreboard or whatever at the just outside of center field, the scoreboard itself part, the, the part that actually lights up, it was okay, but the advertising stuff around it just shattered yeah. and shredded. It was just oh, oh man, it was crazy. Yeah. So it it was a pretty gnarly storm. But we and we also had another mm. thunderstorm last night. Um which which is kind of good because with all this heat and 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 humidity and the and the the hot sun, our lawns are not going to be liking it too much. So we'll take any rain we can get. 
Yeah. So <clears throat> it was pretty wild. But anyway, yeah. tonight we're going to talk about. Uh, I'll 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 do a little bit of an update of what I can anyway on iOS 18 and the Photos app because there's some pretty significant changes there. And then we're going to cover some other editing apps. And the show title will be called The Good, The Bad, and The Ugly when it comes to these editing mm-hmm. apps. So um, we'll see what that's all about in, in a little bit. But um, so the Photos app, it's been basically redesigned. And uh, oh, yeah, by the way, sorry, folks, we're not on YouTube. We haven't got things figured out there yet. Uh, Dave and I are on FaceTime right now. And... We don't know how to get that onto YouTube, so <laughs> we're yeah. There, there's not an easy way. Of course, no. Apple and Google never. Apple and Google have not played well together in, a de- in over a decade. Yeah. Uh. So, yeah. There, it, it there's not a simple output to YouTube, or YouTube has a input from FaceTime for yeah. uh, on the web. And I, sh- I should also say too that Luke Terrian. Uh, one of our listeners from out in Alberta, Canada here, he offered to put me on his Zoom account um, because he's got like 10 months left on his subscription. And um, if I was able if I was able to go on as an administrator on his account, hopefully we were able to do everything that I was able to do on my old account, you know, but so him and I tried to call and it only went, it, it, it said it was only going to go for 40 minutes. So I thought, well, that's not going to work. I mean, at best, we could use Zoom. And at the end of the 40 minutes, we could just cut it off and start again. But that doesn't really make sense. Um, and, and I'm just talking as far as like YouTube goes, right? I mean, we could do like a part one, part two. But I don't know. I don't know if I want to go to that extent or not. But um so, you know, I, I, I appreciate the fact that Luke offered that opportunity, mm-hmm. but it's just too bad that the test didn't go the way we wanted it to go. So that's why there, were, there was still no live show um, on YouTube, but we're working on it. We'll figure something out. Uh, so anyway, um, the Photos app. So I, I wish I could remember exactly how this looked before, but... Uh, there was, a, 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 it, on mine now, it is at the bottom. And I don't know if it was at the bottom or the top, Dave, for, yeah. you know, where it says all photos or months, years, days. Yeah, and, it's at the, it was at the bottom. Okay. Yeah, that, but only if you're in the, li- in the library. Because yes. at the bottom, it used to, because I, I have mine open now. So at the bottom, this is what probably most people are experiencing because most people have not updated to the beta because we're not either brave or crazy. <laughs> yeah. So if you notice now at the bottom of your phone, it does say library for you, uh, albums, and then search. And right above that in kind of a, a bubbled menu, mm-hmm. years, month, day, all photos in that way from yeah. left to right. So the... the um the interface is, you know, it's basically the same as far as that goes. Like if you're in albums and then say you're in all mm-hmm. photos, uh, that's what I've got. But now if I just swipe up a little bit, once I'm at the bottom of the, of the, of the whole album view there, now it, it splits into almost in half where the top half is still the library. But yet now you can swipe over. And you can go to featured photos and it actually plays a little slideshow. And then you can go to um, featured memories. And then you can go to your favorites. And these things were all accessible when you hit albums and then look, just look for different albums. Um, and then it's, it's got like it, it basically it's like all the media types in that uh, videos. And then you can select some of your favorite albums to show here. So I've got a okay. couple like uh, wallpapers and things like that. Um, just albums that if I want to access them quickly, I can do that. And then there's one that says customize and that's where you can actually uh, add different things like, um, uh, gosh, you can add uh, 
trips or, um, you know, some, if you go on a trip, uh, photos will put all those images into an album called trips and then you have different trip albums, people and pets, things like that. So it's pretty customizable in that regard as to what you could put in that, uh, carousel, I guess you could call it. And then in the bottom part, when you start scrolling, scrolling up, or you, you, I guess you're scrolling up to bring the stuff up from the bottom or scrolling down, I guess. Um, so before it said, years months days right well now mm -hmm. the days is gone from that um uh default view because now it's just got all or months or years hmm. and now uh, underneath that it, it has recent days so if i hit recent days it's got yesterday saturday thursday tuesday just any days that i took photos and it goes okay. back for well, quite a quite a few days. Like I'm I'm going back into March, February, hmm. January, down into last year. So it breaks all these things into into days. All the photos that you took on that day, it's showing them. Now, another thing is when you are in these views, like in the days view, your it it shows up almost like a memory, like it like the memories feature. Mm, okay. So I'm going to show Dave on camera here. Okay. Yep. So it's 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 scrolling through like a almost like a video. Oh, okay. And then okay, so yeah, slide to them. Yep. And then you could just tap on the on that, and you could watch the full memory video. Mm, okay. Um, and it'll actually play a song and everything. But then you can tap on the on an image, and then you can just start scrolling through like you normally would, I think. Well, cool. that, well, that was a video. So then here's here's okay. an image. There's an okay. You know, here's yep. some images. And and if it's a video, it'll just start playing. Uh, it, it's it's pretty cool. Um, okay. Well, one thing I found, uh, just kind of doing general people's opinion. Um, there's a Reddit thread about the new iOS photos app and shocking. I, I just want everyone to be, to be prepared. People either love it or they hate it. And it's the worst thing ever. Oh. And why did Apple even think about doing this? And they messed this up so bad. And why is this so bad? I did see one or two people actually try to be the voice of reason and say, um, developer beta. So this is not what's going to end up, but it looks like the, the most common is the redesign is stupid. There are a bunch of idiots for trying this. What's wrong with Apple? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Which uh, everything Apple redesigns, that's pretty much the, the only thing I think that Apple ever got overwhelming positive response for hardware or software is when they went away from the butterfly keyboard. Oh yeah. That, you know, was like, okay, you know, that keyboard that we said that was great, that everyone, that a lot of people are, we're getting rid of it. And everyone's like, yes. Yeah. Other yeah. than that. And by the way, mm -hmm. I, I, I missed all that. I didn't have a computer with that, but, um, you know, people hate it. People love it. It's the first time you're trying anything new. People are going to hate and then what happens is after a few months, you get used to it. And there are some things that'll probably be better, some things that'll be worse. It'll take adjustment because it sounds like it is a major redesign. Yeah. Yeah. And, and you know, so, for me personally, I don't mind it. I kind of like it. Yeah. Um, I haven't explored it to the fullest, I don't think. Uh, just probably because I haven't had a whole lot of time to do that. I mean, I've been mm -hmm. kind of looking at a bunch of other things on it too, like, like in the iOS all together. But, um, mm -hmm. but you know what? I think it's pretty cool. It's, uh, you know, I think it's a nice redesign. It works great in the beta. Like, I, I don't think it's ever crashed on me. Yeah. Um, you know, it, it built un, un, under the recent days, it, it goes, it goes to people and pets. So, I mean, you had people, before, but now it's including pets. So maybe you had pets before. Yep. I can't remember. 
But th then you've got your pinned collections. Um, so you know, you've got your map view, your recently saved, your favorites. Um, then below that is memories, which is uh, oh memories, and then below that is your trips, and then down below that you can get into your albums and your shared albums, and your featured photos, and all that stuff. <clears throat> um, it even at the very bottom has wallpaper suggestions from your photos. No, oh. so you know there's there's it's a it's a real feature filled uh, application now. I think even mm -hmm. more so than before, and I think if people uh, kind of open their minds about it and start exploring it, I think they'll find that it's not as bad as they think. Um, you know, some people just obviously don't accept change very well, but Apple's going to say, "Well, this is the way it is." <laughs> yeah, yeah. A Apple has gotten better with feedback and making suggestions, but only if it's not the general complaints if it's a much bigger complaint issue yeah yeah you know um so something else that is is a little different is the um the editing fu function so when you open an image in photos and just look at a single image uh, mm -hmm. in the top right it used to say edit mm -hmm. so now in the top right, you have a, a little three dot thing, okay, with with a, a drop down menu where it says copy, duplicate, hide. You can hide photos, um, show in all photos, uh, or play as sl a slideshow. Um, okay, I'm not sure what it's going to play as a slideshow when you just select one image in your whole whole album. Right, but, right. but you can also add to an album or move to a shared library, adjust the date and time, and adjust yeah. location. So it gives you a lot of okay. things to pick from here. Now, that's very similar to what's available now. Yeah. Uh, now now you got the copy, duplicate, hide, slideshow, add to album. Uh, I don't have a move to shared library. And showing all photos, obviously, I don't have because... Um, that's the new organization. Oh yeah. Okay. Um, so, you know, that's, that's in the, uh, what do they call that? The ellipses with the three dots, yeah. a circle with the three dots. And then there's also an X. So you hit the X and it just closes that image. It goes back to, uh, you know, the album view here. So now at the bottom, you've got your, okay. It's almost like a okay. dynamic island at the bottom. Yeah. Where you've got your, you can hit hit the heart to put it in your favorites. Mm -hmm. Or you can hit the, uh, is it the, 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 the eye, the information. Yep. And then you've got, uh, it looks mm. like little sliders. You hit those little sliders and that opens it up in the edit view. Okay. Now and it edit looks like, it also looks like the buttons themselves are have a little border around them or a little there you know where the buttons are yeah it's almost like a dynamic island yeah yeah but even even the share sheet and the yeah, um and the, and the there's a little can. circle around yeah there's a little circle around it where right now there's nothing around it except for the image itself yeah and hopefully this stays this this uh this look because I've seen mm -hmm. in betas in the past where they have something like that looks like that, but then I've seen them take it off Goes and away. make it look like it yep. used to look before. But hopefully they'll keep it like this. Um, mm -hmm. But when you hit edit, like the, 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 it looks like three little sliders, and that mm -hmm. takes you into the editing. Everything looks very similar, almost identical, I would say. Okay. Um, when you, uh, now when you hit the little, ellipses in the top right hand corner you get a menu okay that says um copy edits paste edits save as a duplicate mm -hmm. uh that you that you can get to your extensions from there like you know you can take okay. it into touch yep. retouch or all that stuff mm -hmm. anything that this is, is an extension in the photos app but here's something new appearance you can have it in dark mode remember in editing you, mm. it was always black in the background mm-hmm now you can have it light. Ah. 
So if you don't like the black background when you're editing, you can have the white background or, or a very, right. very light grayish color. Uh-huh. Um, or you can just have it set to system. So if you're in light mode, it'll be the light. And if it be dark mode, it'll be dark. Or, uh-huh. you know, like I say, you can have it um, override that and go to either light or dark. So I prefer right. it in dark myself. And then all the all the adjustments are the same. You know, there's no okay. difference in any of those. And as far as I could tell, they all work the same too. Like unless there's some, you know, some little intricacies in the algorithms and how they work. I mean, I, I can't well, really tell. Yeah. But. Yeah. I mean, unless you do like an A-B uh, comparison saying when you click auto on iOS 18 versus 17, the yeah. photo, the same photo it looks it, but you would need to have two Zach cam, two Zach phone set up, and every you know to, to test it that way. Yeah, and yeah. yeah, that's not us. <laughs> but but off the cuff, the, the auto looks very similar to what it did before in the yeah. adjustments. In in to me, uh, yeah, I think it's pretty similar. So, but yeah, it, it's it's a uh, it's it's very much the same in that regard. Um, now there's a the markup tool, which is uh, okay. you know the little pen thing. It looks like it's all the same too. Uh, I don't think that anything changes in there. Now you can add a sticker though. I don't know if you could do that currently. Hmm. But it says I, I could add a sticker so. to a photo. No, oh, I think that may be new. So let's see what happens here. Yeah, so I could I could put a sticker on that image. Oh, okay. And one thing that is useful is not only can a sticker be an icon or, you know, cartoony, it can also be um, taken from their photo. Yeah, yeah. Hmm. Yeah, so, I mean, Markup's got a few changes in it. Uh, I, I don't, if, if, so if you're someone who uses the Photos app for editing all the time, I think you're going to be happy with what mm-hmm. they've done because it really hasn't changed a lot. Um, you know, it, it, it's got the tag up in the top right corner for a raw, or sorry, top left-hand corner for a, a raw image because I shot this in raw. And if you shot JPEG, it'll say JPEG. If, she, if you shot a live photo, I'm sure it'll say live. And... Um, but that's that you know without being able to show everything on video uh that's kind of the gist of what's new about the photos app mm-hmm. um, now one thing that's missing because apple intelligence has not been released and it won't be released until later this year mm-hmm. um is the cleanup tool yes that's right yeah so even though now when they release that it looks like you'll be right when you hit the edit screen. So you have the um, like an, uh, you have the adjust, you have the filters, the crop, and then there's a cleanup one that looks like a old fashioned pink eraser. Oh, yeah. And then you do that and then you can circle objects and use a gender of AI. And, it's, and I'm reading something from Apple uh, Insider saying that uses the on chip AI. Yes. Yeah. Everything which is- which is good. Yeah. Just just a, just about everything is done on device. And I like that because it makes me feel a little more comfortable about using it. And mm-hmm. there are some things in this whole Apple intelligence suite that have to go to the cloud, but it's a private cloud just right. for that purpose too. So, I mean, yeah. that's also encouraging. Um, yeah. And, and I, I can't And if something wait. needs to be gone, go to... Sorry, yeah, go ahead, Craig. Oh, I was just going to say, I can't wait for this AI, this Apple Intelligence stuff to come out because I don't want to say it out loud because I've got a HomePod behind me that'll probably speak up. S-word. Yes, S-word. You know who. When I was on the... Mark, your Zo- girlfriend. Yes. Well, <laughs> when I was on the Zoom call with Luke earlier, <laughs> testing out this, mm-hmm. uh, this idea that he had, my stupid HomePod... <laughs> came on and says i can't do that right now and all this stuff and and he laughed because he heard it and he says oh is that mark's friend (laughs) i said yes it is (laughs) Mm -hmm. oh he i guess he heard that and thought it was pretty funny (laughs) Mm. 
In fact, I, I played that for my cousin not too long ago, and she just <laughs> roared. <laughs> so, like, the, just the rant part, you know, that, that one that came oh, out yeah. as a separate episode. But, um, but yeah, that's... Uh, so, I mean, hopefully it'll be better for Mark when it comes out. That's all, that's all I could say. That is true, yes. Yes. Well, I'm also hoping that they are... I don't want to say hiding because it was a, it was a big deal, but the updated photo app sounds like it's more updated on the organization and viewing and not editing. Yeah. I, I, so that's a, that's a good statement. I, so it would be nice if they would, and they may, this may be something that's just kind of behind the scenes in line, not necessarily, you know, we're going to splash it out everywhere, but um ways they can use ai for photo editing so they may wait for the and not not the eraser tool we're talking you know i have an image that has sky up the sky a little little picture of a lake and some additional shoreline and to say okay use ai to look at the image and give me suggestions for the you know the auto tool Give me suggestions on what it should look like or let the auto tool fix it, which I know it already does, but I could see them trying to expand that yeah. with some additional Apple intelligence. Like, yeah, because in the in the keynote, they, they showed that where somebody said, make this image pop. And it basically, yeah. it, it was pretty much the auto tool, but mm-hmm. I'm not sure if there was anything extra done to it or what, like maybe a little more saturation than than the normal auto would do i don't know right and and i don't know if if you said like you know make the blue make the blue sky pop i wonder if it would just make the sky pop or you know i just wonder what that functionality is going to be like but i guess we'll never know until until it comes out in the fall right uh, right and that's the yeah but you know hey it's it's going to be nice to you know play with that stuff when it does come out Mm -hmm. but Unfortunately, it's only going to be on the 15 Pro phones and newer, and the 16 coming out. Right. So, right. if you're on a 14 Pro Max, you know, I'm sorry, it it, it just won't work. Um, yeah. It, it's it's a shame. Now, I don't know if that's everything in Apple intelligence or certain things or. <sighs> it's Apple or everything Apple intelligence. It is everything. Okay. Yeah. yeah, but it also will work on iPads with M1 or higher. Yes, that's right. And Macs with M1 or higher. Yeah. Or not M1, but... um. Yeah, M1. Yeah, M1. Yep. Yeah, you're right. M1, sorry. So A17 chips and M1 or higher. Yeah. So... That, that's, a lot of the, that's, that's a lot of iPads because like the iPad Air now has an M2 chip. Yeah. The new one they released. So yeah. that will have Apple intelligence. Like my wife's iPad All, Air 4th Gen, I think, is the first M1 iPad Air. Okay. So okay. she'll be able to experience this on she'll her She'll be able iPad. to do it too. Not, yeah. not on her phone though. But, right. Um, right. But yeah, yeah, it's so, you know, so the Photos app, it's gone through some changes. And mm-hmm. in my opinion, I think it's changes for the better because it makes things more um, more fun to use. I mean, the editing mm-hmm. stuff, yeah. I mean, so far it's pretty much the same, but, um, oh, here's another thing in editing, Dave, when you, so when you copy adjustments, mm-hmm. you have, you have choices. Oh. So let me find an edited photo. Okay. Here's one. Okay. okay. Uh, now me... when I go to copy adjustments, okay, I have to go into edit first. Okay. And then yep. then hit the ellipses and then hit copy edits. Oh, maybe it's not. No, that one's already edited. Hang on. Okay. Let me find one here. Okay, this one. Okay. Okay. Copy edits. Now, I'm given choices. Now, this was a portrait shot and this is a ah. shot. This is a shot that's going to be talked about in our recent photos coming up. But Okay. I can copy the fact that it was portrait, and then I can do. Oh, ju- I could toggle just the adjustments. Okay. And I can t- uh, toggle the rotation. 
And then there's a thing that says adaptive at the bottom. So, okay, so for portrait, if I made adjustments to the, like the F-stop in portrait, it'll copy mm-hmm. that. If any adjustments that I made with the, the, you know, the usual adjustment sliders, it could copy that. And then the rotation. You could do one at one of these or all of them or two of them or whatever. And then at the bottom, it says adaptive. Now it says automatically match the exposure and white balance of the source image. As a result, slider values, slider values will not match exactly the ones being copied. So mm. if I changed the white balance and exposure of this image and then tried to copy the adjustments... If I turn on adaptive, it'll use the original white balance and the original exposure values that I use to take the shot. Okay. So that's kind of neat. Um, you know, if I if I if I have a picture and I'm copying the adjustments, but I don't want to I don't want it to be that warm. Say I really warmed it up in in post. Okay. If mm-hmm. I want to put the color temperature like the white balance back to where it was. It could do that. Mm, so okay. that's pretty cool. Mm-hmm. So that's some additional things that way too. Because yeah, I just yeah. tried it. I just tried it on mine, and you can only copy all the edits. In yeah. fact, that kind of that kind of reminds me of Adobe Lightroom Mobile, where you can copy edits and select what you want to copy. Or yes, copy. that's right. Yep. Yeah. So so that's pretty cool. Um. And, and and that just popped into my head just before I wanted to move on here, but uh, mm-hmm. but yeah, that's that that's a very cool feature. Yeah. And um, now I can't off the top of my head think of anything else that really stands out, you know, as far as differences goes. But mm. um, it's, been, but it's yeah. only been a week, so yeah, yeah. <laughs> and and there's been no no more updates yet. You know, the, the, that's right. still, still on the original beta, um, first yeah. beta release. So. We'll see what happens. And I think by the time the public beta hits, maybe some other things will be there. I don't know. Mm -hmm. But we'll see. So this brings us to um, the other thing we wanted to talk about before we get to our recent photos. And that is uh, editing apps and, you know, the good, the bad and the ugly of some of these apps. Um, Let's let's start with. Let's start with, uh, okay, so we won't talk about photos because we just did, but I mean, yeah. we can mention it a little bit. What I'll say there is that it's good because it's good. It is good at what it does. Mm-hmm. And it's built into every iPhone. You don't have to buy it. You don't have to download it. It's there. And it, uh, y- you know, it, it you, could, you could get away with just that. That's it. You don't need anything else. So that being said, if you do want to expand on your editing prowess, there's a plethora of editing apps available. We're not going to go over them all. <laughs> I mean, oh no. Dave, I think you between you and I, we probably have at least 50 or more <laughs> editing apps on our phones combined. At probably, least. yeah. Yeah. And we both have our favorites. And but one that we use in com- in common, I would say for the most part, at least right now, is Lightroom Mobile. Mm-hmm. So, what do you like about it? Like, what what's what's I, the good about yeah. Lightroom Mobile? Now, I'll say this: that we talked about how Lightroom Mobile was um, uh, adding some additional things for paid subscribers. Mm-hmm. And I did the one week free trial. Uh, I decided not to continue on with it, so I'm back to the free version. Oh, okay. Um, you know, but I may that, go to in that month. week. In that week, yeah. though, you, you experienced. Yeah. Well, I mean, I'm still of- using it. Yeah, but I'm still using it. Yeah. Uh, so some of the only thing that I'm really missing are the layering, where it's it, it does it did a great job with picking out. You know, I want to work on this tree or I want to work on the subject or the sky separately, especially dealing with the sky, with the tree, with leaves. It, it picked out everything great automatically. Yeah. So you didn't have to do any masking or other stuff like that. So that, that worked out great. 
Um, I like the fact that it can HDR without making a messy HDR. You know, mm-hmm. because remember the early HDR apps and oh, HDR yeah. photos. Yeah, they they had they had a style to them. Uh, it was not realistic, but there was a style to it that you knew. Oh, you're looking at an HDR image. Yeah, yeah. So, um, it does a good job with pulling up. In fact, uh, one of the recent photos I used, I put in Lightroom Mobile, and it did a nice job. And you, it's, like I said, the the haze slider and the clarity slider are so powerful. And yeah. with the free version, you do get to use them. You just can't selectively use them like you can with the paid version. Yeah. Um, and the other thing the paid version has using AI to, uh, suggest presets. Oh yeah. So that will say, you can go and say, okay, preset, look at, review the image and let me know, give me a good suggestion. And that may be worth it depending on what you're using it for. Cause then it's kind of hard to recreate it on your own based on the sliders because some of the advanced features aren't available to you. For the free version. But I, I like that. I like how powerful it is. It's relatively straightforward to use. It's not overly complicated. Um, and I like the, the fact it give you a free version that isn't exceptionally crippled. As there it have is, been other software in the past. It's it's it's, it's, it's still usable. Pretty powerful. Yeah. 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 It's still pretty usable for what a lot of people want to use. Yeah. Yeah, I would have to echo those comments. Um, I was on the free version for quite a while before I subscribed, and I, I just paid mm-hmm. for a year. And then when that year's up, though, I think I'm going to let it let it go back to the free one. But it is nice, you know. The masking is really good, um, mm-hmm. you know, and and like you say, being able to to work on layers of different things, and you know, it's all pretty good. Um, but I think you, you know, I'm I'm just trying to really cut back on any subscriptions that I don't really need. Um, and, you know, uh, sometimes I just impulse subscribe <laughs> and I probably shouldn't be doing that. But it's not that I have a ton of them, but I do have a few. And Lightroom Mobile is pretty powerful without it. And I think mm-hmm. I can manage um, without it just like I did before. So, yeah. uh, so you know, so those are the good things about it. The bad, I would say, is that the subscription is a little pricey at times. Um, it depends on, how, like, okay, if if you got if you got Lightroom, Creative Cloud, or whatever it is on the desktop, I don't know how it all works. You generally get Lightroom Mobile included in that, but right, it's, exp- right. it's it's a lot it's a lot more per month. Um, I think it's in for me in Canada. I think it's around. Fourteen dollars a month or something like that. Um, mm. I, I can't remember if if we were on if we were on live on YouTube and Scott Baker was in the, in the chat, he'd be, able <laughs> to fi- he'd be able to fix me up on that. Um, and when he hears this, he's probably going to say, "No, it's not right." But anyway, it's it's a lot more than just the standalone YouTube or YouTube uh, Lightroom mobile mm. um, subscription. But <clears throat> so you know that's. That's kind of the bad is the fact that it can be pricey and a lot of people don't want to pay that and I don't blame them. Um, yeah. So they then they, they end up miss out, they end up missing out on some of the really cool things. Yeah. To me, the ugly is, I guess I I guess I would have to say it's what's in the news right now with with uh, Lightroom <laughs> and Adobe and the AI thing. I don't yeah, know which, enough about it to make it that's informed overblown. comment. That's, a, that, it's overblown. Well, like there's a lot of people overblown. dropping their subscriptions. Oh, yeah. Oh, no, that shocks me. I, the, the thing is that Adobe's been making a lot of people mad for a lot of years. Yeah. Uh, first of all, get going to a subscription model. That made a lot of people mad. Yeah. And then changing things around on the subscription model. And now it's boilerplate saying we can use your images however we want you know it's the it's in it's the same eula that we all kind of see when you upload images and like and and by the way people um don't go to facebook or instagram and say buy this post here 
I'm not giving <laughs> Instagram or Facebook the rights to use my images. And this is legal binding. And this is a legal contract because I'm making up. A, no, you're not. <laughs> yeah, I know. Eh? <laughs> I, I see those posts every so often from yeah, people, yeah. Not, not necessarily in the group, but I see those posts and it's like, you agree to terms of service by using an app. Yeah. No one reads it. I shouldn't say no one. Almost no one reads it because they're written in legal talk and they're hard to figure out. It's yeah. reality. So, you know, it's so someone picked out this and they're like, look what I saw. And Adobe came out and said, yeah, um, we're still not going to use your thing. We don't own your images and we're not going to use them for AI and we're not going to do this. We're not going to do that. So, yeah. But yeah, there, there's 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 laws, and every country's different on what they allow and what they don't allow, and that's why when you download versions, they're country specific. That's why the version I download and Greg would down or or use, I don't say download anymore because mm -hmm. you don't really download a full software. But you know, when you use the software, they have that whole user agreement that you or license agreement, and that's per country, and it's a pain in the butt. And, but real quick, I, I also looked for individuals for Adobe uh, in the U.S. Mm -hmm. for a single app is $10 a month. Uh, so th this is a desktop? Desktop, desktop. Okay. Yeah. Uh, the photography one, which is a full version of Photoshop and Lightroom is $20 a month. And all their apps are 60 and that's 20 plus apps, but most people don't need that. Oh, yeah, yeah. Now, if you're a student or teacher, it's only $20 for all your apps. So if you know someone who's a teacher or teaches anywhere, they, they can be very open with the definition of teacher, mm -hmm. you know, um, or a student somewhere or a part-time student, you know, you can get that exclusive right, you know, the exclusive price there. But yeah, so there, there's a lot there. And a lot of people are, are just mad at Adobe right now, but a lot of people are mad at a lot of companies, but yeah, yeah. the other thing yeah. I don't like about the other thing I really don't like about Adobe uh, Lightroom is that it, you upload it, work on it, export it, and you got two copies. And other things like Photomator, uh, Polar, which I really don't use much anymore, uh, you do an edit, and it, it even Snapsy, you do an edit, and you can oh, you can put the edit on the existing image, so you're you don't have duplicate images. Yeah, yeah, which which can be a bit of a hassle. Yeah. Yeah, especially if you especially if you're like us and you have well, hold on. Let me I'm going to get the number here. I'm going to get my big number here. Let's go to the big board. <laughs> yeah. Uh, let's see here. Thirty eight thousand one hundred and fifty one photos and twenty six hundred sixty four videos. OK, and now just just for <laughs> comparison, the new photos app, it just like, calls them items. So ah. this is uh, this is this would be everything. And so since I started over with a new photos library, when I got this phone, it was it, there's only three thousand three hundred and twenty three items. Yeah, OK, but but yeah, it doesn't break them down to between photos and videos. So that's that's something I, I didn't know that before until you brought that up. So that's good. Good, good mm -hmm. information. Um, so. So, you know, Lightroom is, uh, it's good, it's bad, and it can be ugly depending on how you look at it. Um, I didn't think this whole thing was as bad as people were saying. Um, I, I unsubscribed long before this ever happened uh, because I just flat out thought to myself, don't, I don't need these extra features going beyond the year, so I'm, I'm just going right. to, you know, I canceled the subscription, but I've got it until it renews next year sometime. So that's fine. Um, but I've got, you know, I've got uh, dark room, which I do pay for a year, but it's a lot less. Like it's less than half, I think, of uh, of, of the Adobe one. I think. I'm not sure. Right. Um, but if I'm going to subscribe to one, I'll, I'll subscribe to it because it's cheaper. 
I have Photometer. One one time mm-hmm. price on that one. Um, yeah. You know, I've got a few. I've got a bunch of different ones. And which I th- I think that has changed. Oh so, yeah. Oh, so it's a subscription now. Uh no. There we go. Photometer. Uh, let me check here. Yeah, we when you see that. Okay, and I probably see. Yeah, it's now a year now. There you can do a lifetime. Okay. Uh, yeah. it's now, I don't know. This is for the Mac version. I should say this is for the oh, Mac yeah. version, not the one. Yeah. So the Mac version is 80 bucks. Yeah. Cause I think it's, so, I think it's probably the same for iOS. Um, and I think if you bought it one place, I think you get it in both. Yeah. Because I've got it on the Mac and I got it on iOS. I think, let me just double check. Yes, I do. Okay. And uh, there's yeah, no way because, I yeah, because yeah, because it has a, it has a screen yeah it has the screenshots for all three Mac, iPhone, and iPad. Yeah. So, so now the year the yearly is only thirty dollars. So it's not bad for a yearly amount. Yeah, I mean, if you don't think you're going to use it any more than a year, like like with me with with Lightroom right. Mobile, get the one year and then let let it expire. But yeah, uh, because honestly, the lifetime offer is a little over two years worth. Yeah. Yeah, because yeah. the monthly subscription is eight dollars US. Right. That's pricey. That's pricey. Yeah, yeah. They they really are pushing people towards the um the lifetime or the yearly. For for for, for the yearly, yeah. Yeah. So uh I mean we, we could have a lot of conversation about a lot of different apps, and I know we were gonna mm-hmm. kind of mention a bunch of them here, but um I think, you know, just because we're getting on in with time here, I think we'll, um, let's just pick one more to go over here. It's something okay. that we both have. And um, hmm. let's make it something a little different. Like, uh, oh, okay. So, hmm. okay. So basically I pick Lightroom Mobile. Why don't you pick one and I'll, and I'll tell you if I have it or not. <sighs> the thing is, I think... That's here because the ones that I use for my creative ones, I mm-hmm. don't think you have either art card or visionist, but that's not really editing. That's digital image creation, for lack of a better term. Right. But I mean, hey, that's part because, of it, right? Because it's kind of going crazy. Yeah. Uh, one thing I use occasionally is Snapseed still. Yeah. It's very occasional for me, to be honest. Yeah. Um, yeah. Honestly, my heavy use is honestly Lightroom. Right. Um, and that that's and also touch retouch. Yeah. Okay. So I've got touch retouch. Uh, yeah. I, I also have Visionist. Um, okay. But yeah. Okay. Let's 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 look at touch retouch. Yeah. Yeah. Um, we've probably both used that more than we use we we would use Visionist. Maybe I don't know. But um, so the good is it works well. Um, yeah. you know, it, it's very good at removing unwanted objects in an, in an image. Um, mm-hmm. it, it has an, if I remember correctly, I think it now does some stuff with AI, but, um, yeah, what's new in touch retouch? Uh, oh, there's a community thing. Join the discord. No, I don't want to do that. No. Um, let's see here. Go to an image that I don't care if I mess it up or not. <laughs> okay, this is one that I just took out. No, one positive. Around, one positive about touch retouch is that you can edit in. You can bring it up from inside the Photos app. Yes, as an extension. Yeah. So, so you can do it as an extension, and you can if you use if you open let's say something not as an extension but as the app itself, you can either save a copy or override to the existing image right but yeah. it's not it's not a destructive edit yes that's right so you can always pull it back if you do it you don't like what you see so that really makes a big difference there um yeah now the erase tool it it's using ai in this latest uh-huh. version so because it, yeah. it says you pick the erase tool it says erase ai and when you erase an object 
it does a pretty good job. Yeah. Um, let's see. Let's see if I can find something else I can erase. And the other thing is um, they do now have an automatic mesh and removal. So if you do a picture through a, let's say, a fence, yep. it will pick up that mesh by the repeating pattern so you don't have to individually go over each vertical and horizontal line and it'll take care of it. Yeah. I haven't had much of a use for that because I try not to take pictures through a mesh, to mm -hmm. be honest. Yeah. But it does have mesh detection. So that is one thing. And this may be one thing also where it's the, the term AI. It was probably using machine learning all along. Yeah, probably. So, so it was using some form of artificial intelligence. It's, one of those things that it's like Apple said during the keynote, we've been using machine learning for a long time. We just haven't been calling it AI because when people think mm -hmm. AI, they think of um, large language models, which have been really got on to everything in the last year and a half or so. So, but yeah, it, it does a really good job with removing things, um, you know, Oh, you don't want that car in the scene there. It'll take it out. Uh, it does do really good edge detection. Yeah. Because you're pretty much, you're using your finger to select. So it, you know, it is like, oh, you want to remove that thing, not everything that you've highlighted on the screen. So that really does help too. Yeah. Um, I would say the bad would be the fact that in the app store, every um in-app purchase is a subscription thing it, for either a year a week or a month so mm -hmm. again you know it, it's a you know but the subscription models they're they're there to help the developer keep things going you know right. it pays for the shoes and it allows them to further develop their apps and make them better and better um it's not priced out of this world really but yet, okay, so here's something here. The, the yearly plan, there's three, four, <laughs> five. I, I've six, known that, yeah. Six different ones that say yearly plan. And they're either $19.99, $19.49, $19.99, $29.99, $19.99, dollars $29 Which one is which? This is the, this is the yeah. ugly in the app store. It, it just, they don't tell you which one does what. There's only one place where it says weekly plan. It's two ninety nine, which I think is a little out of this world for a week. Um, another one four ninety nine for a month, which is I'd, I'd like to see that two ninety nine a month. But I mean, you'd, you'd want to use this thing a lot to pay these prices, right? And that goes with now, any subscription model, I think. <clears throat> now, if you were one of the olds like us. And you bought it when it was a one-time purchase. Right. Um, you are on what's called Retouch Core. And there is a premium now um, that is see here. You can do things like um, there's going to be exclusive features that will only be in Retouch Plus. Yeah. Uh, so it says, yeah, plan to support, opt-in to support our further app development AI research. Uh, if you are paid for now, um, it's a 50% loyalty discount is what they call it. Uh, and there's a new blur tool with face and text detection here. Mm -hmm. And I'm bringing up real quick just to see what the, uh, okay. That's not it there. Okay. If I hit subscribe. Okay. So, okay. Now this is not bad. Um, so if you upgrade, at least this is U.S., um, the Erase AI is only if you go for the plus version. Okay. And the blur feature. So you can blur faces and text on images. Oh, yeah. Okay. Um, and the, you can do additional AI. Um, it's, at least for me, for the first year, it's seven dollars and forty nine cents, so it's half off, and That's then fifteen dollars, fifteen dollars a year 
um, after that, yeah. which to me sounds for for basically even with the fifteen dollars a year at a buck fifty a month, that's that's reasonable. Yeah, yeah, uh, but again, I think you're not going to pay it unless you're going to use it, right? Right. I, I, right. I would think. <clears throat> And honestly, I am kind of tempted to get it just because I know how good touch retouch is. The blur, I don't see me using that much. Um, but if they're going to additional AI features, so it may, it sounds like what you're going to get is if you have, let's say, the existing one, here's your base model mm -hmm. and it's going to stay the same. All the new stuff is going into the plus plan Yeah, is the way I'm reading it. So that's part of the problem you won't get. And again, developers need to pay money. And if you do, if you only charge once for something, and this is something we've talked about, if you only charge once for something, people never upgrade. Yeah. Because they're like, it's good enough. That's, that's, you know, that's why Adobe went subscription. That's why Microsoft went subscription. That's why, if you remember back in the early days, you had to pay for the new version of the operating system. Mm, yeah, that's right. <clears throat> yep. With iPhones. It was a one-time yearly thing. You had to pay for it, download it, and you got it that way. Well, not with iPhones, and then there were, but with Mac. With no, Mac with Mac. Windows. I'm sorry, with Mac. Yeah. You're right. Yeah, with Mac you did. Yeah. And they were like, you know what? We'll just push it out because we want everyone updated to the latest one as possible. And I think part of the problem was when developers went to them and said, well, we have people using four different versions of the operating system and no one wants to pay $100 upgrade to the newest version of Mac OS. So we're not going to develop for you because we don't want to develop four different versions. So they were like, oh, we want to make sure everyone upgrades to the latest as easy as possible. Let's make it free. Yeah. And it was easy and it was easy for Apple because they even though they do get a good amount of money from the App Store and subscriptions and everything else, they're still primarily a hardware company. Um with their income. iPhones yeah, still almost the, make up the, half the of their services income. Services are really doing well though. Right. Right. But that's more the services are like Apple TV Plus and Fitness Plus. And, you know, it's not really operating system based. Right. Yeah. You know, <clears throat> it, it's still, and you know, all their services are Apple hardware based only. Mm -hmm. Pretty much. Pretty much. Yeah. So it yeah. isn't like, you know, like if, if I wanted to get um, Google One, which is their, extra storage and everything else. I don't need a Google device for that. Oh, okay. You know, like I use Google photos as my secondary backup. Yeah. So I have that as my secondary backup. So I buy a little extra storage through there and a little extra storage through iCloud, which both of them could afford given that they're multi trillion dollar companies, at least Apple's a multi trillion dollar company. Can give us a little bit more storage. Yeah. Yeah. You give us a phone that gets 48 megapixel pictures that it does 8K storage and you only give us five megabytes free or five gigabytes free. I mean, yeah, yeah, no, it's five. No, it's five megs, right? For the base iCloud pan. Yeah. Five gigabytes. Five gigs. Okay. Yeah. <clears throat> yeah. But all I know is it really isn't much when you can buy a phone that's a terabyte phone. Yeah. Yeah. Five <laughs> is it's five is nothing anymore but yeah. uh yeah um okay so you know there's 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 good bad and ugly about mm -hmm. just about any editing app i guess and uh we, we touched on a couple there but uh i think we better move on to our recent photos yep sounds and, good uh so i don't have them to uh display on the screen obviously because we're not st streaming on we're not YouTube. youtubing but um so we'll go to our shared album and let's do this one first. Okay. Okay, folks. So, so look on your look on your podcast player, uh, whether it's uh, the Apple Podcast app or Overcast or uh, Pocket Cast. I think 
does it too. If you can get the enhanced version of the podcast, you'll be able to see Dave's mm-hmm. image on your phone. And let's hear about this one. Yep. This is pretty cool. Sure. Yeah, this one was taken out my back um, yard. And what it is, and let me bring it up here on my phone. Um, so there, we have a little wind spinner. Not really a wind chime because it does make noise, but it, it's a spinner for the, for, the, for the wind that we have in front of some plants. And if you look at the image, you notice that there's kind of an interior border. Yeah, yeah. Kind of a white interior border. That was the original photo. Oh. And I wanted to post it to Instagram, but Instagram, because Instagram does not handle 16, uh, 13 by 9 or really tall images really well without chopping it off. Right. Uh, I went in the Snapseed and used their expand feature. So everything outside of that is generated by Snapseed. Oh, okay. Sometimes it does a really good job. Like, I think here it literally looks like it's part of the image. It does not look gener- computer generated. Um, I thought it was part of the image when I looked at it. (laughs) Yeah, yeah. Sometimes it does a horrible job, but this one it did really good. And I, I'm trying to remember because this was like another multi-step, multi-step, multi-step image. Oh yeah. Um, I really wanted to highlight because it's a gold and red spinner that's up Mm -hmm. there, and the greenery behind it, but everything else I kind of wanted to de-emphasize. So I wanted to give it, and and it kind of has a not really a vintage look, but kind of an, a rougher look, for lack of a better term, to it. Yeah. So it's not like extra, extra crisp, extra clear. And the idea was just to give it a, like an old-fashioned border around it. But when it kept chopping it off, I expanded it out. And I like the way that when it expanded it, um, it gave it like an interior border. Yeah. Yeah, that's kind of cool. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's kind of and and I'm trying to remember if that. I think that's a snapsy border also, mm-hmm. uh, because they have kind of it's kind of a faded design to yeah. the border there. So yeah. I, I just like the way it turned out that way, and it, it like I said, it adds a little interest to just kind of a a backyard scene. Yeah, yeah, that's cool. Um, you know. It, it looks like it's an autumn again. Like like you had one, I mm-hmm. think it was the last last time we did our recent photos, you had one that looked like it was in the autumn. Uh, it was that, that chimney picture. Yes. Yeah. And, you know, and, and this one kind of reminds me of that style of edit, but uh, a, a little more, um, with a little more artistic flair, I guess you could say. And mm-hmm. uh, Now, most but, of the editing was done in Lightroom Mobile, though. Oh, yeah. Yeah, I'm refreshing myself. So yeah, most of that was done in Lightroom Mobile. Um, but yeah, looking at the photo itself, the unedited photo, um, it's the greens kind of blend a lot. So you have a lot of greens here, and you're not really getting the pop there. Yeah. So yeah. that's why I kind of wanted to give it a little bit of depth here by having the bush there being really green, but the part behind it, which is almost the exact same green in the regular photo. Oh yeah. I made it a lot more brown. Yeah. To to give it, you know, give that dimensionality to the photo. This would be great to print it on canvas. <laughs> yeah. Well, that, that's, that that's reminds really me. What, one thing I did recently was um, I, suscri- not subscribe, but I downloaded, uh, I think it's called Free Prints. I've had it for a while. Let me see if I can. There we go. Yeah. Free Prints. Where you get so many uh, four by six mat prints at no, oh, okay. at, at basically free and just pay for shipping. I don't know if it's outside the US or not. Mm-hmm. So recently I picked out 13 photos and I only had to pay for shipping and tax. So it turned out to be um, $3. Oh, nice. <laughs> and they turned out really well. Good. Um, and you can pay with Apple Pay. You can sign up through Apple oh, login. Yeah. So you don't have like, you know, unusual just so here, here, okay, here, boom, 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 click the thing on the side. Week and a half later. Again, it's not the quickest thing in the world, but for the price, 
it's not bad. Plus, some of the photos turn out really well. So, and if you want to upgrade to glossy prints or bigger sizes or different sizes, you can do that also. Yeah. And they have an app, apparently. Mm -hmm. Going to the yeah, website. Yeah, that's what I use. Yeah. Um, yep. They have multiple apps, actually. Oh, yeah. Because they have free prints. They have uh, GIFs. They have a uh, free, f they have photo book and mm -hmm. tiles. So oh, basically okay. you just pay the shipping. And again, it's the same concept as you get, let's say with the, you get, I think 80 photos for a month. You can do uh, for the tile. You get basically one, like, I don't know. I think it's like three by four, three by three inch or four by four inch tile. Yeah. Um, and you know, eight, eight, I'm sorry. Uh, no, that's the luxury eight inch by eight inch there. But yeah, so if you get like a, you can get like a single towel and you get so much. But if you want more than that single image, then that's where they get you with the price and everything kind of lays on top of it, which is their business model. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Uh, I'm just looking in the FAQ here to see if I can yeah. see if it's uh, US only or what, but I can't really find anything. But um you know, maybe maybe if I look it up in the app store, it'll tell me. But uh, <clears throat> no, that's pretty cool. That's a good idea. Um, so, uh, but yeah, that that that's a, a nice image. Um, I, I like the the frame that's you know inside the image itself, and uh, mm -hmm. the you know Snapsy did a pretty decent job of expanding it. So that's good. And uh, but yeah, very cool. Um, We'll jump to my first one, which is the sailboats. Okay. Okay. Uh, we were just at a town not too far away from here, and it was kind of muggy. It wasn't as hot as it was today, but it was kind of warm and a little humid. But I had the, um, I think for this shot, I might have used the black mist filter from from Reflex over okay. the uh, just over the camera array. Of the of the phone, and I took this with the five times, and um, let's see if I can find the info on it. Hmm, I'm not finding it. Anyway, um, oh, it's because it's in the shared album. That's probably why. Uh, but you know, I I just want I thought it looked pretty cool being layered. Um, you know, the different layers of, of the different elements in the image of the foreground with the trees and, or the bushes and the rocks. And then you got a, 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 a bit of a vastness in the water till you get to the boats. Mm -hmm. And then, then you got the break wall. And then beyond that, you've got, believe it or not, that's called Blue Mountain. Ah. It looks like a hill. <laughs> I'm not sure how high it is. They call it Blue Mountain. Uh, there is ski slopes on it. Okay, and, well. Uh, but, I mean, I don't know. I don't know what else to say about it. But it is, sure don't look like a mountain to me. But anyway, it's it's called Blue Mountain in the background there. Uh, yeah. and, and then the sky. And then so the, I think, I, I'm I, like I say, I'm pretty sure I used the black mist filter on this, but I might not have. It's hard to say. But uh, if I did, it's, it's what causes a bit of the softness in the huh. image. Um, mm -hmm. I tend to think I didn't use it in this one. It just doesn't look soft enough to be to be uh, used with the uh, the black mist filter. But anyway, okay. um, but yeah, it, it was a it was a the kind of day where there's haze in the air, but yet the sun's mm -hmm. kind of poking through. You'd almost think it's cloudy, but it was sunny. So it was a uh, it was a nice day, good day for a drive. Got the dog out. The dog went in the water and. Cooled herself off. Oh, good. Whatnot, so. good. <laughs> yeah, she's she loves going in the water now. I don't know why. She's ten years old, twelve years old, sorry. And ever since she was mm -hmm. nine or ten, she just started going to the water. Before that, <laughs> couldn't get her near it. Couldn't get her near it. Yeah. Uh so anyway, so now we'll go on to this one. Okay, yep. The lonely golfer. I figured that was a golf course, yeah. Yeah, yeah. That's a golf course not too far away from my house. And this is out on a run uh, and, and a night. And it was basically between the golf course and the road. 
there's they have trees kind of as a sound break and also i think partially to make sure you know no errand balls goes on the road and the house is across the street yeah yeah um so uh, i just happened to be going by there and it was it was warm so it was like okay i'm in shade so i'm gonna take a minute to walk and cool off a little bit and i looked over and there was the golfer walking away from me and just the way he was framed uh, with the tree around, there was a little bit of an opening where you could see him walking uh, away towards the hole. Mm-hmm. Um, and it's really hard to see the flag because it's a yellow flag. Yeah. But if you look just to the, you may have to zoom in, but if you look just to the left of him, um, hold on, I had a cat walk across the keyboard. <laughs> um, you can see, come here, you come, come here. Okay. 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 So yeah, you can kind of see the right there. You can kind of see it, but yeah, I I just kind of like the way the, um, it just showed there were the, the golfer and it was, it was, he was, he was walking towards the sun. So he's a little silhouette there, not a hundred percent, but yeah. It looks like you may have like, it it looks, I'm not saying you did because I don't know, but it looks like you may have boosted the contrast a bit. I did, yeah, yeah. Okay. I, I did boost the color because uh, you the the blue. If you look on the upper right hand corner, you yeah. can see a little bit of blue sky poking through where you really couldn't see the blue sky that much in real life. Oh, okay, yeah. So, yeah. So, so I mean, there, a little bit of boost, a little bit of editing, which honestly, and I, I have heard other people say this is that you at least do a base you know for most photos you can do just a basic edit for it and Mm. then go off of that and because you know the camera doesn't match your eye so even if you're trying to match exactly what your eye sees you're not going to be able to do that right yeah just because of the limitation of the device now one thing i'm seeing is in the top left hand corner you see the sun peeking through some mm-hmm. branches there, but yet you don't see the annoying green orb or right. reflective thing. Right. Now, and I think that's partially because of the, um, be, because it was through the, um, the branches. So even well, though it is a spot one, it's still a little diffused. Well, I think what's happened here is, uh, I forget if it, maybe two years ago they introduced the ability for in a live photo, which is what this is. Um, mm-hmm. The reflection can automatically gets taken out if the background is plain enough to allow for that, which could be the case here. You know that reflection could have ended up in maybe like the, the grass area, and that was enough yeah. to you know. Uh, clone out automatically that green lens flare thing that annoys so many phone photographers because it's not just iPhones, but it happens in just about any phone. Um, and and it, it, you know, when you took, when you take a live photo, if, if the background's too busy, it can't do it. But if the background's not that busy, like with with detail and things in the way and whatnot, mm-hmm. then it, it will get rid of that annoying green thing. So I th- I think that could be what happened here. Um, but uh, you know I like the image. It's there's no other people yeah. in it except the lone golfer, like you said. Mm-hmm. And um, uh, you know he's he's headed towards the flag. I can see the flag now yep. that I know where it is. Yeah. And uh, you know I, I, it looks like it might have been uh, you know late afternoon. Um, it was actually early evening. It was taken around seven o'clock at night. Oh, yeah. There's the time up there. Seven eleven yeah, p.m. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yep. Well, because I, I like the I like the shadows. Which is, mm-hmm. Yeah, of the trees and whatnot. So, um, so this was an after work run, not a, a lunchtime run. Right. Obviously. Right. Yeah. Right. Right. Yeah. Cool. Well, it's it's a, a quintessential summer. You know, looking at it. So mm-hmm. That's pretty cool. Um, so next I've got this one here, the night shot. Oh yeah. And okay. So 
when you look down the road and you look just above the road, that was supposed to be the Milky Way. But the clouds came okay. in and made mm. darn sure that I didn't get a Milky Way shot. Um, it was it was clear when I left home. This was about a about a fifteen minute drive outside of town. Wow! So to the right hand side, you could see the reflect like the the light pollution from you know some right. the, the lights right. from the city. Um, but looking down this road, it was supposed to be. Um, you know, straight down, right above the road was supposed to be the Milky Way, and mm. I got completely disappointed. So I did. I did edit this. I used um, basically. Okay, so what inspired me to go out and do this in the first place was the fact that Shane Mostyn put a a video up. I think it was earlier that day of um, a, of a, a Milky Way shot that he did. So I thought, okay, I'm going to go get one. It's supposed to be clear. Away I go. This was at mm-hmm. midnight. This was just after midnight. Uh, Ooh. It was last, well, it says Wednesday at 12, 11 a.m. So Tuesday night, mm. Wednesday morning, however you want to look at it. And it was a pitch black road, you know. Um, so I put the tripod up. There's no traffic anywhere. Uh, okay. I put the tripod up pointed the camera straight down the road and I used a flashlight and I just flicked it on and off mm. and that, that's what lit up the road. Okay. Okay. Yeah, and because the the way you're in the middle of the road, mm-hmm. um it almost looks like you have your headlights on, but the headlights would if you had your headlights on that would overwhelm a yeah. lot of the sky. Yeah. Yeah. Uh and, and that that flashlight was set on a real dim setting too, so you mm-hmm. know I just put it on. I think I might have waved it back and forth real quick and then shut it off again. So it wasn't on very long. Out of the 30 seconds it took to take the shot, it was only on for maybe right. two seconds or something like that. So, but anyway, um, yeah, I was quite disappointed that the clouds were rolling in and uh, just totally spoiled the uh, uh, Milky Way shot. The moon was behind me and it was a, yeah. it wasn't much, there wasn't much moon. You know, out it was oh, like a, say, yeah, like a toenail, like, you know that type of thing. Okay. Yep. Yep. And so yeah, because it, it like just, like the tree, the tree on the left is definitely in silhouette. So there's not much. There's definitely you can tell there's definitely and I mean, the light on the road would overwhelm. You know, maybe on the on the side of the road, but it's it looks completely pitch black, dark. Like if yeah. you had the if you turned that off, you wouldn't be able to. You would basically. Like I'm putting my hand up in front of my face, but I can barely see it dark. That's pretty much what it was like. I, I yeah. like the truck was sitting off the side of the road. There was like a, a laneway where farmer a farmer could go into his field. Mm-hmm. That's where the truck was sitting, and I, you know, I, I couldn't see it open the door like, until well, with the key I've got it lights up the light inside, so I could I'd see it. Mm-hmm. But it was just it was dark. It was pretty dark, uh, and the mm-hmm. and the the moon behind me was getting clouded over as well. So that was kind of making it even more dark but anyway it was a it was just a failed attempt at a at a milky way shot and yeah. and and i used oh so i was gonna say too that i used shane's um editing uh regimen on this image that i saw in that video earlier that day yeah. uh you know uh I forget what all what all I had, but increase the contrast and just different things, mm-hmm. a little bit of dehaze and that that sort of thing. Yep. And I did it in Lightroom Mobile. So, but I'll say yeah. it may have been a it may it may have been a failure as a Milky Way, but as a cloudy, starry night, it worked out well. Yeah, you know, I, I'm happy with how it turned out. Oh, all yeah. things considered, I'm just disappointed that I, the Milky Way was supposed to go across the sky from one mm. side to the other instead of going like up and down. And mm-hmm. I think that's why I was more disappointed than anything. But you know, it it, it turned out kind of decent the way it is. But uh, oh yeah, yeah. So, uh, so your third one is this little guy. <laughs> yep. And this was actually taken today at lunch. And this is kind of one of the strengths of Lightroom Mobile is that I was able to use the dehaze and clarity because he was under. He was like first branch up on a tree. And he was in a decent amount of shade. So, 
you I let the auto feature use of Lightroom Mobile after a little dehaze, a little clarity, uh, to so you could actually see him. Yeah. Uh, the the original image, he was very much in shade, so it was kind of hard to see him. Mm -hmm. Uh, and it the scrolls just he I basically I was just kind of taking a quick break. It was hot. It was sunny. So I we have a tree in the back of our um, property at work. It'd be nice if they would have let more trees up, but they left like a tree oh, really? surrounded by a whole bunch of grass. Uh, and I would just kind of go in for the tree and just kind of, you know, get a little shade and just relax, clear my head. And all of a sudden I see the little, I see the squirrel on the branch. And also the squirrel saw me. And if you notice that if you zoom in on the image, I am being stared at severely. Oh, here he's, by yeah, he's, he's locked on. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And I also took a, um, I'm trying to remember. I think it was this photo. I also did a quick video of him kind oh, yeah. of looking, scurrying up the tree, <clears> putting <throat> uh, put that <throat> on TikTok. Um, and someone said that squirrel has seen things. <laughs> And that, that squirrel probably knows that you have two dogs. That's true. Yes. <laughs> but, but I mean, so yeah, like I said, it was the, the squirrel just saw me on the tree. This was at the uh, 3X zoom. And I just walked up and saw the squirrel on the tree branch and, you know, basically did not want to walk too close. Didn't want to spoof it. Yeah. Um, and just the way it's kind of froze and the tail just went up in the air and looked at me. I'm like, Okay, <laughs> that's interesting. And I, 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 you know, just the way that the branch had a good amount of, you have some of the green in the branch, mm -hmm. where I guess that's a little bit of moss or something that's growing on the, um, on the tree there. Yeah, be some lichen. Yeah, and so it, he is framed with that in the blue sky in the back. So yeah. it added, it added, you know, it added a little extra frame, and just like the way that the arms down is like, who are you? What are you doing? And what are you going to do to me? Yeah, he's, I, he's I thought ready it just turned fight. out perfectly. <laughs> exactly, exactly. Yeah. Well, I like that the fact that the tail is up and curled over because it mm -hmm. fills that little bit of space between the 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 where the sky is between the top part of the tree and then the other part of the tree at the side. Um, and, uh, you know, the fact that you got him staring right at you, that, that is so cool. Uh, yeah. And, and basically just a well-composed image, really. I mean, uh, yeah. I'm, I'm sure you had to act quickly to, to yes. get him yeah. before he Well, off that, that's a crazy, that's a crazy thing. He stayed, I actually got multiple photos and videos because he just stayed there kind of frozen looking at me. Oh, well, so I've right, been then. stared at for a good amount of time before uh, jumped off and went to a higher branch. Yeah. Well, well that's all right. Yeah. Okay. Uh, well, before we have any more technical difficulties, I'll get to my last yep. one here. <laughs> and it's okay. uh, this little guy. Aww. So this was yesterday out at my parents' place. Uh, yesterday being Father's Day. Um, mm -hmm. So there was my dad. Oh, So let, let's just... Back it up. There was this little guy. He's my grandson. So my mm -hmm. son, his father was there. I'm my son's father, and my dad is my father. So there was four generations there. Mm -hmm. And uh, this is his little uh, little uh, battery powered tractor that he likes to <laughs> ride around on. And if you go to, what I'll do is I'll share it in the uh, podcast Facebook group. Um, it's a video I did of. I pushed him around my dad's really big lawn on the back of this mm. thing because the battery was running down and it, it wouldn't go for him when he put his foot on the pedal. Right. So I pushed him around and I held the phone behind him. And so all you see is the back of his head bopping around. And what I did was I I took it into iMovie and I took it, put it at four times the speed and I put the Benny Hill music to it. <laughs> <laughs> and it's it turned out really cute and fun. So... Uh, it's just on my Facebook you know, profile, but I'll share it into the group um, mm -hmm. sometime tonight. And uh, this was a portrait mode shot, and uh, he was just looking, I forget what he was looking at, but it might have been my dad's big lawnmower, because he ended up getting on it, hoping it ah, would go somewhere, okay. but it was shut off. 
but um but yeah he was just uh checking things out and and uh uh he's he turned two in april and he's just getting to the point now where he doesn't need his afternoon ma- uh, nap but when, oh. when his name is jameson so when when jameson was getting in the truck to go home my son's truck he was kind of kicking up a screen, a little bit of a, you know, mm. I don't want to go type of thing. But mm-hmm. I, I'll bet you as soon as he got a quarter mile down the road, this guy was out <laughs> like a light. <laughs> mm-hmm. uh, but uh, so as far as the edit goes, I, I increased the portrait blur just a little bit. Um, uh, you know, I, I think I actually used the auto function in photos. And, uh, you know, just give it a, a little boost of saturation and whatnot. And you can't tell, but I put a very slight vignette around it just to take some of the brightness off the corners where the sun mm. is shining in the grass. Uh, just so subtle, but it, it, sometimes mm-hmm. that's all you need just to just to help it along. So, but yeah, that's uh, that's my grandson. Um, Aww. Just such a cute little guy. And, and that hat, my son got that hat, I think it was on Amazon. And you can't see the front of it, but on the front is a, a label, a picture of a, I think of a picture of a car or something like that, but but it's got his name on it. It's personalized. It. Oh, cool. So that's kind of cool. Yeah. And he wore, wore that hat all day long. He, he wears hats all the time, I think, pretty much. Yeah. So like father, like son there. I myself, I never wear a hat, but my son wears them all the time. <laughs> so, but yeah, no, it was, it was, it was good to be able to get the four generations mm. together and, mm-hmm. and, uh. Get and we got a picture of that too, but you know I don't know how my dad and my son feel like having their picture out there, so I, I'm not going <laughs> to yeah. post it. But um, but yeah, so that was that was uh, Father's Day. Now you sent one more here, Dave. Um, yeah, it was Ruth's picture. Yes, yeah. So the way this had this is the Oakmont Country Club clubhouse. Oh yeah, and. When you get close to it, you can't see it because, like the other golf course, uh, there's rows of trees around it. So, of course, privacy. No, this is yeah. the the, the mm-hmm. one I run by is not – it's still a country club, but it's not like super, super exclusive. It's, it's still pricey, but it's yeah. – Oakmont, on the other hand, is beyond exclusive. Okay. Um mm-hmm. I, 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 when the U.S. Women's Open was there around 10 years ago, me and Ruth went to one of the practice routes where you oh, can go okay. and just kind of walk around the course and see people practicing. And, you know, uh, the U.S. Men's Open will be there next year. Oh, nice. Yeah. And it's one of the I think they call it heritage sites or something like that, where they're guaranteed a U.S. Open or a Women's Open or an Amateur Open every so many years. Oh, okay. So, um, yeah, it's one of those courses, and it's an absolutely brutal course. But the the clubhouse, if you're coming from kind of out, um, into town, into Oakmont, because of the way the hills are, if you're cresting one of the hills, it's a good amount of way we were, mm-hmm. because we had to use the 5X Zoom. Right. But if you're cresting the hill, you can look over the trees and see the country club, then see the cor- the the clubhouse kind of overlooking the gor- golf course. So this Ruth took this um, while I was driving, and then I threw it into Lightroom Mobile to clean up. Obviously, you take a picture in, in, from a windshield; oh, it's not yeah. going to look great. Yeah. So I did the editing there and corrected some other things that were going on there. Yeah. Well, that's cool. And it, it, it got looks the like image there. And, it looks like it has like a painterly effect to it. Yeah. Yeah. And, that, and that's partially, like I said, it, it did the five X zoom. There's still an, uh, an issue. You're going 40 miles an hour on the road. Yeah. Yeah. So she's trying to take a photo on a ro- road, and of course, it's Pittsburgh. It's Pittsburgh area, I should say. So the road's not straight. Or flat, mm-hmm. um, because we do not have straight or flat roads here. And it did like I said, just the five X. Five X is good, but it's still kind of the limit of what the phone can do. Yeah, yeah. So well, it's, it's yeah, a nice so I did shot. Some editing. I mean, it looked, yeah, it turned out nice there. Yeah, it's, it's a beautiful, um, a, a beautiful country club by the looks of it. And uh, oh yeah, um, 
you know, she, she done good to get this, you know, in mm-hmm. the car uh, as a drive by, I guess you could call it. Um, yeah. Now, is it cropped at all or? Um, no, I think it's more just a matter of um, getting it from the distance and using the 5X. Okay. Well, so she it's did not good. really crop per se. Yeah. Yeah. And yeah. I'm trying to remember if, uh, since I didn't take it, let me see if I can. Uh, I'm trying to see if it's digital zoom or if it's only the 5X. And I can't really tell. It just says 120 mil, 120 millimeter. Yeah. So it does not say per se. Well, in any but, case, yeah. it's a it, it's a nice looking image, and uh, oh yeah, she's becoming a real photographer. <laughs> oh yeah, like I said, she has the eye for the shot. Yeah, uh, much better than I do. Uh, she just doesn't have the the editing really want or desire. Yeah, or like the creative some of the unusual editing that I do. Yeah. But that's okay. I mean, yeah, a lot of people prefer just straight out of the camera shots, you know? So Mm -hmm. Exactly. Yeah. All right. Well, that's uh, another good round of our recent photos. Mm -hmm. And you guys can uh, check out all the links and uh, show notes and whatnot on our Facebook page, uh, the iPhoneography Podcast. And um, we'll have links for the apps that we talked about and... um, you know, all our socials and all that stuff will be on there. And uh, we'll put the pictures on there, too, that you can have a little better look at them if you either couldn't see them on your phone or want to just get a better look at them. Uh, I'll have those on there uh, probably just after the podcast comes out on Wednesday morning. So um, look for that. So anyway, great show again, Dave. Um, we'll get this video thing figured out sooner or later. And uh, yep. Uh, but in the meantime, uh, enjoy this weather. We're, we're, we're supposed to have a heat wave a bit for about three or four days, like I said earlier. Yep. So, um, I don't know how much I'll be venturing out. <laughs> no. Uh, just, you know, I take the dog for a walk and, you know, she's, her tongue's just dragging on the ground by the time she gets back mm-hmm. and it's just like a, about two blocks or so and then yeah. back again. So, um, but anyway, uh, if you're going to be out running, be careful. <laughs> no, 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 no. I, I am not a hot runner, hot weather runner. Oh, yeah. Uh, so if I am going, if I am going to run, uh, it will be a day I work from home and it will be getting out at like six o'clock, six thirty in the morning. Yeah. Yeah. That's a good idea. But even but even then, it's still going to be like 70 degrees Fahrenheit, which is a bit on the warm side still when you're running. Oh, yeah. 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 Because, it, you know, it's not like in the cold, you can layer up. And then if you get too warm, you can start peeling down a bit. Once, to once a point. Hot, once it's hot, yeah. it's hot. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. Yeah. All righty. Okay. Well, mm-hmm. thanks again, Dave. I guess we'll no, see welcome, everybody Greg. on the next one. Have a great one, everyone.